Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hello, I hope you're doing all okay. So this week, you haven't got the wonderful Cliff. You've got me and Basti instead. Um, and I'll be in the chat and I'll go away now, but I'm here. So feel free to say hello, good morning, where you are. It'd be lovely to hear from you today. And um, because we're sitting in the same room and doing this together, we thought we'd wear our most attractive visors for you to see, which is what we also use when we do treatments at the centre. Um, so, we thought we'd start with um, just a little quote from a fantastic book called The Tao Te Ching. And this is sort of, have just a bit of an over and over idea throughout the whole the whole sort of next two or three days next two or three weeks i think yes you have us for another two weeks after this yeah <laughs> and then you'll get the, the fabulous cliff back we'll give them back to you so just take a moment and arrive and say hi and have a mind to just think about this do you think you can take over the universe and improve it I don't believe it can be done. The universe, everything, is sacred. Speak up, okay. The universe and everything in it is sacred. It's all there is. You cannot improve it. If you try to force change, you'll ruin it. If you try to hold on to it, you may lose it. So sometimes things are ahead of you, sometimes things are behind. Sometimes breathing is hard and sometimes it comes easy. Sometimes there is strength and sometimes weakness. Sometimes one is feeling up and sometimes down. Therefore, the sage avoids extremes, excesses, and complacency. And so essentially, let's just take it easy. With that, I'm going to pass over to Kat, and I'll see you in a few minutes. I'll take this off. Can you all hear okay? I know it's. I've been playing with the volume but I hope it's all okay. Um, Dinah, please shout at me if you can't hear me anymore. So if we're all comfortable, if we all come up to standing, so we can just come to an easy parallel, really easy, it doesn't matter, hip or shoulder width apart, whatever feels good for you this morning. And we just wanna kind of tread in the feet and sway through the legs and allow the spine to just follow with this movement. And you can allow the arms just to hang by the side. Bless you. So from here, we're just gonna stand and open the feet and allow the pelvis to just settle. So it drops down towards gravity you can just allow the weight of your pelvis to drop. There's no effort. Just like Basti said just now, just to take it easy. So from here. Louder. Need to be louder. Uh, okay, oh, hang on. Uh, sorry, I'm still getting used to where all the buttons are. Please bear with me. Everyone's saying they can't hear very well. Okay, then. And Jacqueline thinks the camera's out of focus, although it looks fine here. Yes, please bear with me a sec. It's something with the volume and I'm not sure exactly where the button is. This better. Okay. Okay, that's great. Hopefully it's a bit clearer. 
Great, okay. <laughs> we'll come back to standing. Um, the camera focuses itself, so if I move, it kind of goes a bit fuzzy and um, we'll try and refocus. So I'm glad the sound's fixed. There was a small button that I didn't press earlier. Okay, so calmly coming back to standing if you um, came to sit to type. Thank you very much for your feedback. Um, so pressing the feet, we'll just rearrange ourselves again to come to standing, whatever parallel suits you today, and allowing the pelvis to just drop with gravity, taking it easy, and the arms can just hang by the side of the body. And the spine is nice and soft. It's kind of riding on the wave of your breath. So you don't have to stand here still, allowing any movement to come in is wonderful. So if we take our hands together and start to rub them together, creating some chi, some ki and energy in between the hands. Great. And then from here, we're just gonna allow them to touch the top of the head. So if you're comfortable with touching the top of the head, that's great. If not, you can just keep your hands a little far, like just off the head, but allowing the key and energy, this wonderful energy you just made to come to the top of the head. And just see where your breath is. Just to notice, no need to change anything, just to see where it is right now. And then from here, we're gonna take our fingertips and we're gonna tap the top of the head over the skull, so it's very loose wrists, top of the head, side of the head, just gently tapping around the face, kind of like the rain this morning, something to refresh us. Feeling the shape of our skull, of our bones, the back of the skull, so you can gently let the chin tuck under towards the chest and tap the occipital point on the skull at the back. And then if you wish to, just gently tapping around the face, a little lighter, the jaw, cheek, around the eyes. And then either side of the neck, gently tapping. And then onto the top of the shoulders. So if this is a little uncomfortable for your shoulders or neck, uh, support one elbow with the opposite hand and we'll tap the opposite shoulder and we're going to do a very loose fist or you can stick to fingertips and we're going to tap from the neck outwards along to the tip of the shoulder gently tapping out if you feel like there's a bit of stagnation or it's tight you can allow a little more weight into the loose fist or fingertips Great. and then onto the chest both hands, it's a little bit like Tarzan. Still keeping our feet nice and spread in the ground. Lovely. Really waking up. So we're tapping the lung meridian here, lung one, allowing wonderful breath and chi to come in. And we'll do the same with the opposite arm. So allowing the opposite hand to support that arm. And we're gonna go from the neck out towards the shoulder. Wonderful. So seeing what pressure is right for you this morning along the top of the neck and shoulder. Okay. And then coming back to the chest. And then from here, if we come back to fingertips, so from the chest going down the sternum, we're just gently tapping on the sternum. Um, we don't want to be too vigorous here. It's quite a delicate area. And then on to uh, the rib cage, so just underneath the ribs and gently tapping all the way out to the side of the ribs there. Okay. And then from here, so I'm just going to turn around so you can see. If it's comfortable too, just gently dropping the head and shoulders forward and allowing the thumb and index finger side to reach towards the kidneys. If it's, um, we don't want to jam the arms up too high because it will hurt the shoulders. 
We just want to go wherever's comfortable and gently tap in here. And we can keep the knees soft. And at this height, if this is still uncomfortable for you, you can just gently rest the hands on the sacrum. I'm thinking of the bones and the breath in the lower burner. That good old lower burner that clips, always worked on over the weeks. And then coming down to the sacrum, and then tapping into the glutes, either side, lovely. And I'll come to base front again, and we're now on the front of the pelvis. So take these taps, uh, uh, pressure and speed, whatever suits you this morning. So if you're feeling that a rhythm, my rhythm's not working for you, you can go a lot slower and a lot um, more gentle with the pressure. So tailor what you feel that you need. So we're going to go down the front of the legs. We're going to go down the stomach and up the spleen meridian that we've done lots and lots of times with Cliff over the weeks. Over the months, I should say. I can't remember when we started, sometime in March. So we're going to keep the knees soft. I'll turn this one. Spreading the feet, we're going to keep the knees soft and allowing the pelvis to drop. Just gently, we're going to tap down. Go as far as you can. If you can't reach the feet, it's totally fine. Just imagining that you're moving the energy downwards towards the feet. So from the top of the pelvis, I'm using the flat of my hands, but you can use fingertips as well. Softening the knees, allow the head to relax as well. On the outside of the knee, down the shin and towards the second toe. Good. And then we're going to come up from the big toe, softening the knees a little bit more so the pelvis can tuck over and back up to the pelvis. Let's do that twice more if that's comfortable for you. Tucking down the front outside part of the leg, softening the knees and allow the head to relax to the second toe, swapping to the inside of the big toe, softening the knees and tapping all the way back up. Once more, in your own time, allowing your breath to just come in naturally. Lovely. And then from here, we can just take the hands to circling. So if we place one hand over the other on our dantian, just below the navel, our wonderful centre, central point in our hara, in the belly area. We'll just do some circling. So I'm going right hip, up to the right ribs, and across to the left, and down to the left hip. The same with these circles. It's completely your speed, up to you what rhythm you go, perhaps they're smaller circles but making this movement suit whatever mood or however you're feeling this morning. And just noticing where your breath is. And gently making these circles come into a spiral. We're gonna spiral all the way down to our Dantian, spiraling inwards, all this wonderful energy and chi we've created this morning. Spiraling all the way to the center of our heart, to the Dantian. And the feet are soft and spread in the ground so we can allow Earth's energy up through our feet, through our kidney one point. And our spine can grow upwards, the space between each vertebrae, so it can allow the wonderful heaven's energy in. And just noticing how you feel. So you can close your eyes, notice where your breath is, see how you're feeling right now. So from here, I'm just going to read a visualisation. 
So if you're happy to stay standing, please feel free to. If you wish to rest and sit, you can also do that too, or, or lie down, whichever. So I'm just going to read from this really lovely book. And it's called A Widening Field by Miranda Tufnell. She's a dancer and a craniosacral therapist. So wherever you're at, standing, sitting or lying, and just noticing how you feel and perhaps focusing gently on your breath, seeing if there's anywhere that needs a little attention. Not to change anything, but just to notice. And you can just allow these words to float over you or see where it takes you. Imagine you have no bones. One by one, let your bones soften and disappear. Let go the small bones of your hands and feet. Let the ribs melt between front and back. Let the length of your spine dissolve. And the long bones of the arms and legs slowly vanish. Sense how the body's weight softens and falls. Sense your weight as liquid spilling and spreading out. Let in the drift and tides of breath into the fluid depth of your body. Sense gravity, the slow mass of earth beneath you, supporting and turning. If you wish to, you can take time moving with no bones. Perhaps it's just a spontaneous um, shift from side to side, or perhaps you'd just like to stay still. And just allowing your body to receive the breath all the way down into the Dantian to our center and all the way down to our feet. So whether you're still or gently moving, we're going to slowly one by one replace our bones. We're going to put back the 24 small bones into the pathway of our spine the five deep bones fusing into the sacrum and the tiny curling bones of the coccyx. Sense length of the spine spreading out from your back. Replace the long bones into the center of your arms and legs. Open the length of limbs. Replace the curved bones of your ribs pelvis and head. Sense roundness, depth and volume. Let the breath fill into the marrow of your bones. Sense the geology of their form and let bone be as land within the fluid flow of your body. Let the hardness of ground meet the firm edges of your bone. So wherever you are standing or sitting or lying, if you have your hands over your dantian, you, or you don't, you can just release them by your sides. If you have your eyes closed, you can just gently open them again. And perhaps if you are standing, just shifting the weight through your feet again. Lovely. 
So I hope you're doing all all right. We're just going to go into some spiral movements um, from here. I know we didn't do a poll this morning. I think I was too busy concentrating on the volume adjustment. Um, but please check in with yourself whenever you need to rest or um, move a little bit more. Uh, I know you're all intelligent human beings and you can choose this for yourself. So we're going to start from the feet up towards the head. So the tapping, we started from the head down. We're going to encourage this wonderful movement of spiraling of the earth energy all the way up through the joints in the body. So we're just going to shift the weight into one foot. It's a very simple thing, but it's great. Our body loves spirals. Joints work in spirals. So just rotating the ball of the foot on the floor. And perhaps there's a point that feels a little bit um, crunchy or it feels wonderfully smooth. So if there's a part you want to stay in, like for me today, it's nearer my little toe. I want to work this point on the little toe. And you can change direction. You don't have to press too hard, just the figuring out what pressure is right for you this morning. And then from here, if you're comfortable to, I'll turn sideways so you can see. Gently tucking the toes underneath. And we're just going to gently open the front of the ankle here. So you can play with uh, where you place the leg. We're just opening here. If it's too much to tuck the toes under, just gently lifting the heel. As though we're placing our stilettos on. Uh, whatever gender you are, it doesn't matter, you can wear heels. So just allowing the heel to come off the floor. If it's too much to cut, great. And then just stepping it back into a little lunge and allowing the back of the leg to open up all the way to the pelvis from the little toe. Lovely. We'll just do that once more. The weight is dropping down into the supporting leg and again back into a lunge, allowing everything to just go for the ride. Nothing too strenuous. And we're going to swap feet. So the one we've just worked, we're going to allow the weight to drop into that. And we're going to do our circles on the ball of the foot as well. Perhaps there's a difference between each foot. My left foot feels great. Doesn't need so much work today. And different directions. Lovely. Opening where the toes join the foot. The ball of the foot where our wonderful kidney one point is. Perhaps there's a part that you don't want to move because it's a bit painful and that's totally fine as well. And then again, gently allowing the toes to tuck under wherever that feels comfortable for you or just allowing the heel to come up. So just opening the front of the ankle here, all those wonderful meridians in the front of the foot and ankle. And then stepping it back into a lunge, allowing the back of the leg to open up from the little toe all the way up into the sacrum opening up the bladder and the kidney channel and again gently tucking the toes under or just lifting the heel off the floor and then stepping back into a little lunge lovely and we'll come back to a parallel and if it's comfortable for you allowing the legs to come in a little closer they can touch if you wish and if you're happy to softening the knees and placing the hands on the kneecaps if this is too much you can keep the knees soft and hold the pelvis the top. So if you have any lower back pain, you can stay standing upwards. And we're going to do circles with the knees. This one's one of my favourites. Um, you can do small circles with the knees, quite subtle, or larger ones, depending what's right for you this morning. And the joy of spirals in the body is it works all this wonderful synovial fluid that we have. It's kind of like the body's natural WD-40. We're oiling our joints. And it's coming from the ankles to the knees and to the lower back. So really oiling out all these wonderful spiraling joints. And you can change direction as well. And allowing the head and neck to really relax. You don't have to hold on anything, all the shoulders. And allow them to soften down the ribs at the back. Lovely. 
and then softening the knees, so allow the spirals to stop, softening the knees and come back up to standing. Lovely. We're going to take a wider stance. We're going to keep the legs nice and long, elongated, all the way up into the pelvis. So for me, we're going to do, we're going to do spirals and circles with the pelvis. And with the knees soft, I feel it goes into more of a bigger part of the pelvis, as in more of the outside gets moved. I've been um, playing around at home with long legs. I feel that the circles go deeper into the joint and they help to send the synovial fluid far deeper into the joint, the ball and socket joint of the femur and the pelvis. So just allowing some nice circles with the pelvis, the invisible hula hoop. And just reminding ourselves and myself, like Basti said at the very start, to just take it easy. We can change direction as well. And then from here, we're just going to gently allow this circle to come into a spiral. So it's imagining the coccyx is drawing a circle on the floor and it's coming in as a spiral until it lands somewhere really comfortable and neutral for you. And then you can just allow the pelvis to drop with gravity. I'm just going to walk the feet in a little closer and then from here we're going to do the shoulders, ribs and a little bit of the neck at the same time. So I'll turn slightly sideways so you can see. So only go as far as is comfortable for you. You can do, I'll show the different variants. So we're going to soften the knees and allow the chin to tuck to the chest and the shoulders can kind of hang forward, the arms are loose as well. I'm going to gather the shoulders up and draw them up towards the ears and then as we're standing up straight, the shoulder blades, the scapulas can melt down the ribs at the back. So you can do this on an out breath for you. And as we breathe in, the shoulders lift us and gently melt back down the ribs at the back. So we're breathing out and breathing in, gathering. So do this a few times for yourself and they can be huge movements, really allowing the body to drop with gravity. But perhaps you don't feel that's right for you today. So even subtle movement is wonderful for our joints and meridians. So just dropping the head and shoulders. It can be as small and still as wonderful to be subtle. So making this one your last one, allowing the shoulder blades to really slide down the ribs at the back and the arms can hang. I'm just going to take the head from one side to the other, just looking from one side to the other, not straining anything, just gliding from side to side, imagining there's little cushions in between each vertebra in the neck, all the way up into the skull. So the spine meets the skull at the same level as our ears, with a nice long spine right into the centre of our skull. And then letting the head come back to neutral, Spreading the feet into the ground, the ankles are soft, the knees are soft, and the pelvis can just drop with gravity. And we can just take a breath here, just to see how you're feeling, just checking in with yourself. Allowing the breath to enter naturally. So 
I'm going to open my eyes and um, pass you over to Basti. We're just going to do a little swap. So uh, please bear with me while we swap. Basti, do you want to do a jewel or a It's okay. Hello, everyone. That was absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. Um, we didn't do a poll at the beginning, and maybe we'll do a poll at the end to see how you're all doing at the end, just how you're feeling, because it's always nice to sort of check in with each other. Um, from here, uh, I would like us to just do a bit of work on our hands and feet, um, using our hands. So I'm going to get a bit closer. Now that we've opened up the whole of our body and we've got blood moving, we've got a bit more energy moving, it means that any work that we start to do on our hands and feet will have a lovely effect into the rest of us. So I'm going to come a bit closer. Feel free to sit yourself down. Um, so we're still working out how to work this all. You tell me now. Is that good? That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Kat. <laughs> so, first of all, we're going to work on the hands. And if you think from the sort of just above the wrists upwards, we've got this lovely point that is about three fingers width below your wrist crease. And this is lovely for just relaxing and for calming the mind. And if anyone has any kind of nausea, anxiety related especially, very helpful. So just massaging up from the middle of the wrist up into through the hand, and you're going through the pretty much the middle of the hand, just slightly off towards one side. And then towards the middle finger. I'm just gonna work, just squeezing, just squeezing, quite happy and nonchalant about it. Enjoying it. There we go. And then I want you to have a think that we're going to stretch out each of the fingers. So we're going to start with the thumb. So if you put your hand over the thumb and just start to lean it back a little bit. Now, obviously, don't force it too much. Um, this is just a feel what's right for you. So I like to draw it back towards my shoulder a little bit, but give a bit of resistance from my hand. You feel the stretch. Okay. Now you can do outwards with the fingers, and you can do it one by one. So you put your hand on your finger, and just almost let your arm become heavy, and it just sort of sinks down. Quite nice, really. But just feel that stretch start to draw through the hand and into the arm. Not forcing anything, you're just letting this arm become nice and heavy, gently but surely, drawing the finger out. Now onto the third finger, after the thumb. ring finger, I suppose we could call it. Just letting your arm become nice and heavy, drawing it out. And then lastly, the little finger. Drawing it out, opening out. All of the channels, they run into or run from the extremities, the hands and the feet. So it's a really lovely place to get into. So just feel around in amongst the muscles, squeeze in there, in between the bones, those lovely bones that we've taken out, put back in again, cleaned up with Kat's wonderful work, finding spaces that you can explore. And sometimes you may find somewhere where it's nice to kind of stay in for a while. That's absolutely fine. Go for it. Sometimes we find a space to work on, sometimes we don't, like with the thing we were reading before. So that's one hand. Give it a little bit of a shake. And just take a moment to notice what the difference is like between the two hands. So using your now probably lovely big fluffy hand, start working on the other one. So uh, we're going to do the same again. That from the wrist crease down the middle, and it's three 
finger's width. Um, often you'll see, you know, veins and tendons kind of coming together in the middle here, and that's kind of where you're aiming for, but you normally feel it. So just squeezing gently with the pad of your thumb down through the hand into the middle finger. I hope this is all clear. Um, and just to let you know, we'll try and type in uh, ourselves the names of the books and the authors for those who want to know at the end of the session. Okay, so now we've done that a few times, we're going to stretch out the fingers again. So round the thumb, and start to draw in. Round the thumb, start to draw in. And again, it's that feeling of the arm just becoming heavy, sinking in. Finger, forefinger, not forcing anything, you're just allowing it, the feeling to open out, stretching through the finger into the arm. Then the middle finger, do the next finger along, and lastly the little finger. A little bit of a shake, squeeze in between where the bones are, maybe squeeze the bones even, just to have a little explore, a little play inside the spaces. Because it's, it's in a sense, the um, spaces between the tissues of the body, which is where the channels that get called the meridians run. And so that's where the chi flows through in the body, this idea of a, an energy of life. So it's always worth just having a little explore, a little bit of a play. Squeeze in between, seeing what it's like. If something's painful, maybe don't do it as much, unless it feels like it's a worthwhile pain. Okay, squeeze your hands, give them a bit of a shake. Ah. Notice how they're feeling. Lovely. So now we're going to do just very briefly the feet. And I've got my spotty socks on today so you can see my feet very clearly. But we're going to just squeeze around the feet. Now I'll point my feet right up to you. You're squeezing just underneath the foot to start with. And you may have remembered from classes before and if you haven't been here before, then um, uh, then in this point here, which is sort of three, um, what's the word, two thirds of the way up your foot, there's a very important point called bubbling spring, kidney one, and it's the most yin point, which means it's the most close to the earth, uh, has the most sort of lovely, calming, sinking quality. Uh, it draws in a lot of the earth energy. And with all of the winds that have been going on around here, I don't know about anywhere else in England and anywhere else people may be, but we've been having a lot of wind. It's been blowing a lot of things about. And it can make our minds feel a bit blown about. So a bit of calming down might be quite nice. And just keep squeezing around here. And then we're going to go over the top. So I'm going to bring my foot round so you can see. But you're going to go over the top between the, the bones of the big toe and the next toe. Just squeezing down and then give the toe a bit of a wiggle. And then find the next one, squeeze between and then give the toe a bit of a wiggle. And then, just so I'm showing, you don't have to lift your foot up like this. <laughs> squeeze, <laughs> squeeze between the next toe, bones. Oh, that feels good. I'm just gonna stay here for a moment, but feel free to carry on. Give the toe a bit of a wiggle. And the last toe, if you haven't already got there, just squeezing in between. Giving a bit of a, there we go. 
And let's not forget the heel. Squeeze the heel and around the ankles. Okay, get a bit of a rub. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And of course the other foot. So just squeezing underneath, squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And really open up that kidney one point. And if you want to, it may be that you're sitting with your foot down, much like this. And if you can reach your foot, of course, fantastic. If you can't reach your foot, put something on the ground underneath you and work your foot onto it. So have a sense of the sole of your foot opening up a little bit, relaxing. Any tension in there, just see it like it's dissolving, ice melting into water. Just feeling like it's all softening and opening. And this is how we can work a point to help it open into the channel. This is a great point to work. Okay, done enough on the sole of the foot. So now we're going to move to the upper foot again. And we're going to go in between the bones of the big toe and the second toe. And of course, all over the foot, there are points, fantastic points. But to go through them all here would be a little bit too much. Look at the toe. However, there may be times in some of the next sessions where some of the points may be fantastically useful to go over. So we may do that a bit more often. Just like I said with the point on your wrist, it can be used very simply for things like nausea, anxiety, calming the mind. So if you haven't already done so, go to the last toe space in between the bones. Wiggle the toe, squeeze the heel and the ankle. Give it a bit of a general rub down. And then our favorite bit, we're gonna hit the ground. And if you're on a soft futon like me, go to a hard floor. And just feel the feet. It just helps release a bit more blood and energy into the feet, fantastic. Now let's stand up. Ah, so, oh, I just need the camera to come up a little bit, please. Fantastic assistant. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that we're standing, just take a moment to tune into yourself. Notice how you're feeling. And like in the reading at the beginning, sometimes breathing is hard and sometimes it comes easy. Just noticing how that's feeling. How is your breath inside of yourself? Okay. If you're feeling like you need deeper breath, we can start working on that. Um, we're going, I'm going to give you a couple of variations of just a little bit of a um, breath work to kind of build the energy up or to help release and clear out. So, first of all, bring your hands over your dantian, over the area between your belly button and your top of your pubis. You've got your kind of lower belly in here. So hands on this area, give a little bit of a rub, a little bit of sending energy into this area, almost like you're kind of sending a feeling of warmth, and settling and strength. Mm, okay, so when we breathe in, try to bring the breath in and let it just sink down into where your hands are. So we're going to take a nice deep breath in. Let it sink down. Relax. Breathe out what you don't need. Okay. If 
you can sink the breath straight down into the belly, fantastic. If you can't, breathe in, try to let everything settle, and then breathe out what you don't need. So breathing in, let everything settle, breathe out what you don't need. Now I'm going to bring one hand to my lower back. If you can reach your lower back, fantastic. If you can't, just imagine your hand sinking right through to the lower back. So when we breathe in now, we're going to do a couple more of these breathing into the lower belly. Try to imagine the breath is not just going to the belly, it's also filling up the lower back, the sides of the body, everywhere. As if your area here is just a balloon, You're filling it up with the breath. Okay, so breathing in, let everything settle into this lower area, relax and breathe out. Soften around the hips, the lower back, breathe in, let everything settle, breathe out what you don't need. And the last one, breathing in. And breathing out. Okay, a little bit of shake, a little bit of a shake off. Give your body a little bit of a shake off. Any area that you notice you need to give a little bit more of a shake off to, absolutely fine. And do the hips a little bit, the lower back. <sighs> huh? Okay. Letting that start to settle, letting that start to settle. And then noticing yourself just coming to standing, or if you're needing to sit down, sit down, it's absolutely fine. And again, just check in. Just check in, notice how that lower area is feeling now. Hmm. For me, a lot more full, which I'm pleased about. We're going to take our attention to the middle area, the middle burner. As Cliff often talks about these three areas being the three burning spaces where our energy of the body is kind of produced and then communicates with each other. So we're just going to briefly bring our attention to the middle burner. And this is an interesting one because it sits between upper and lower. It really wants to be free moving and free flowing. So we're going to do that lovely twisting exercise. So make sure you're standing, feet about hip to shoulder width apart, preferably feet facing forwards, and just start to turn in the hips first. So you don't want to be leaning over too much, you want to be kind of in the middle, just turning the hips, just gently moving as much as you need to to begin with. And feel the sinking movement in the hip, taking your body round on a sort of central pillar. And then start to take this turn a bit stronger. Let your arms spin out. Oh, sorry, plant. Move out of your way. Careful not to hit any walls or plants or anyone else you might be doing the exercise with in your home. So you're staying in your center, you'll notice I'm not moving around the place, I'm just staying in the middle, just turning around, and you're letting your arms just be nice and floppy, letting your breath be natural, but take your attention to the middle of your body to your rib cage and notice how they're feeling. Maybe it's lovely and releasing, maybe there's a little bit of tightness, maybe it's just completely fine, you don't notice anything. Notice the organs inside your body, getting a nice massage, the stomach, a bit of the intestines, your liver, all getting a little bit of a gentle massage from 
this one movement. Allowing things to be free and easy in their movement. And then start to let that come to a close. Until the arms have just finished bobbing around, the hips have softened. Let everything relax again. Notice how that area is feeling. Okay, we are now going to just very briefly check in with the upper burner, this upper area here, pretty much from the collarbones down to the diaphragm. And we're just going to, first of all, do a little bit of a stretch. Now, Cliff has done this one with you before, and I'm just going to carry on, because it's a very nice stretch. So it's one where you lean forwards, and I'll do it this way around first. You lean forwards and breathe in. And when you lean back, you open out. Arms pretty much level with the shoulders and chest. And you breathe in. Stretch and breathe out. This is stretching across the middle of the chest, the middle of the arms, the middle of the hands, breathing in forwards. And then, and this is often called heart protector or pericardium. And it's a lovely quality of just assisting the heart and the core of your being, the core of your chest as well. Okay. Let that settle. And then we're going to do another quality that's in the chest, which is the lungs, of course. Okay. So for this, we're going to get a little bit of movement going. I'm going to show you sideways first. I know I'm taking you through these quite quickly, but just the time we have. So the hands are uppermost, like this, facing up. Again, you're just standing with top of your head towards the heavens, your tailbone sinking towards the ground. You let the hands come up. They don't come any higher than shoulder height. And then they just swing backwards. Backwards. Gentle swing. And then if you can, allow a bounce, a gentle bounce in the legs. Bounce up, bounce back, bounce up, and bounce back, bounce up, and bounce back. And so the arms almost do no effort whatsoever. And you find that the gentle bouncing is doing almost all you need. And the arms can just open out, the shoulders can open out. Uh, and as Dinah often says, imagine you're attached by a bungee cord from heaven. Boing, boing, boing. And you can accentuate this by opening the thumb and the forefinger, which I always think is like a kid with a sort of a pew, 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 gun. There we go. And just letting them, pointing the finger and the thumb out so that when you bounce, 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 it just stretches open the channels in the arm that relate to the lungs. <sighs> Already helping me to feel like I can sigh. Ah, lovely. Okay. So just a very brief one, checking in with those. And let that come to a close. The bouncing can stop. The arms rest in their own time. And again, just give yourself a little bit of a shake out. And lastly, come back in and just check in. Upper burner, how's that feeling? A bit more open, maybe. Middle burner, how's that feeling? Maybe a bit freer. Lower burner, how's that feeling? Lovely. Settle, more full. And hopefully, there's a bit more communication between the three of them. Now, 
like us to just check in with a, I mean, maybe we don't need to do a poll because I've done a bit of checking in at the end. But it'd be very nice to just kind of hear how you're all doing. So I think it'd be lovely to kind of do that if we can. Um, as a poll or a question? As a, as a poll. Down here. Let's have a little go at this. Sometimes you know what you're doing and sometimes you don't. So we're going to find out. There. This is how you feel. We can type that. Here we go. Fantastic. So, how are you feeling now? More balanced, about the same, or less balanced? And, and these are all of these things that we do in this class, uh, things that you can do in your own time as well. It's looking fantastic. Absolutely lovely. Most wow. people seem to be more balanced. It's been less active than some of the previous ones. Um, we felt a little bit more doing a calmer class today. Um, but it's been lovely to work with you. And hopefully next time we'll know a bit more about what we're doing with all the different parts uh, of the sights and sound. Uh, I'm going to make a bit of space for Kat to come into the picture. Um, Hang on one second. Should I put my thing back on? Yeah. Okay. We're doing health and safety here. <laughs> so we need, we need to keep health and safety conscious. I'm just going to get mine. Yes. Well, firstly, that was wonderful to work the hands and the feet after we did a lot of moving and sort of spiraling. Opening the hands and feet really helped things to kind of settle and either tonify or, or let go of things, which is lovely. Fantastic. And um, the name of the books, we'll just show you quickly. I'll show you the front cover. So um, I read from A Widening Field, hopefully you can see that, by Miranda Tufnell. That's the one where I did visualisation from. And Basti, you have your... So I've got a book. This is, there are many different uh, translations. This is the Tao Te Ching. It's originally, supposedly, by Lao Tzu, uh, and it's translated, this one is by Gia Fu Feng. Many translations exist because it's a very, very old text. Um, but this one is a beautiful one. Um, and this is, of course, recorded, so you can always check back on these things. Um, and yes, Diana, thank you for yes, putting in the, <laughs> in the text. Lots of translations. Yeah. So we hope you've enjoyed the session today. And um, we thank you all for coming and supporting us and being able to stay open um, to receive clients because now we're doing face to face with our wonderful visors and masks. So um, if you did feel free to still donate and give some money to us it would be wonderful but we absolutely love you coming anyway we really enjoy it absolutely thank you so much everyone lovely to see you all in the comment section as well oh dinah's back <laughs> here's dinah we can't hear you dinah but thank you <laughs> no health and safety here <laughs> 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 lovely to see you well done team lovely loved it thanks Thank for the chat over. diana thanks for joining us everyone and we will see you again next week wednesday um hopefully we'll have a bit more we'll know where the buttons are we'll by then the are. <laughs> um uh, and we'll be doing more work um we'll start again with the same quote from the Dao Te Ching, so you'll hear it again then uh, and we'll see what visualizations and work come up next time. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.